another video here upon the old YouTube channel. And welcome back to another discography review. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most popular and celebrated rock bands and grunge bands out there. And that is Nirvana. Definitely a band that was definitely highly influential to me. But a band I've been up and down a lot within maybe a few years after getting into them. Because they were my favorite band of all time at one point. But maybe a few years ago when Leonard Skinner took that spot. They've kind of been up and down because I really love some of their stuff and some of their other stuff I really hate. So definitely a very mixed band for me for sure. So with all the bullshit out of the way, why don't we get straight into it? So Nirvana only has three studio albums out, but all of them are highly celebrated and classic albums for sure. So this is going to be a short discography review, but one with interesting thoughts for sure. But their first album, Bleach, came out in 1989. And this is my second favorite studio album from Nirvana. Probably my third favorite overall if you're including live albums and other stuff. You know, Bleach is a pretty solid album in my opinion. You know, when I was heavily, heavily into the band, all three of their studio albums definitely were my favorite at one point. But you know, this has some really good songs. This has Love Buzz on here, Negative Creep, and About a Girl. Those are my three favorites off of here. You know, Floyd the Barber and School have really cool guitar riffs. There's lots of really cool guitar riffs off of here. But there's some songs off of here I could not give a fuck about. I don't really care for Paper Cuts or Mr. Mustache or Sifting or Blue. There's a lot of songs off of here that I just don't really care for Kurt Cobain's vocal performances or his guitar playing. But, you know, like I said, some of the songs off of here are really great. I really like uh, Love Buzz and Negative Creep and Mad a Girl and some others like I just said. So definitely an album that I'm very divided on with half the songs I really, really dig and the other half not so much. But I would say this is objectively a good album for what it's going for. Probably could have been touched up a little bit to be a better album. But we'll get into some more thoughts on that when we talk about a later album. But Bleach, you know, it's a pretty wicked album. Not one of my favorites of all time, but one I definitely do enjoy to a certain degree. So those are going to be my thoughts on that one. And now we have their legendary album, Nevermind. A lot of Nirvana fans will be angry at me for calling me a poser Nirvana fan for liking this album the best. But it's their best album, whether you like In Utero or Bleach the best. It's sold the most for a very good reason. It's full, it's chunk full of classic, classic tunes that are some of the band's best. You know, a lot of people hate Smells Like Teen Spirit. That's probably objectively one of their best songs for sure. You know, that didn't sell a whole lot of copies for uh, no reason. And of course, you have In Bloom on here, Come As You Are, Lithium Breed. The first five songs off of this album in particular are badass. I love all five songs of the first five songs. They're all rocking tunes that get me pumped up every time I listen to them. And they're all packed full of energy. There's some songs on here I don't really care about. I don't really care for Territorial Pissings or Polly, but some of the songs later on the album I do enjoy. Something in the Way is really good. Drain You is good. On a Plane, Stay Away. Lots of really good tunes. You know, overall, objectively, this is pretty consistent start to finish with a little instances here that are a little off for me. Uh, this is, in my opinion, some of the best Kurt Cobain vocal performances and guitar performances. You know, I like the production on here. The production is really, really nice, especially compared to the first album, Bleach. It's a big step up in uh, sound quality for sure. So, you know, definitely one of the best rock albums for sure. Uh, maybe in my top 20 albums of all time, definitely top 30 for sure. Of course, was my favorite at one point. But since I'm pretty mixed on the band now, definitely fluctuates quite a bit. So, uh, never mind. Those are going to be my thoughts on that one. After being on social media for quite a while now, one of my biggest hot takes that I have is that In Utero is terrible. Well, I don't know if I would call it flat out terrible like I used to, because a lot of people do like In Utero. It's just not the album for me. A lot of people say this is true Kurt Cobain and what he wanted from the band right from the start. If that's the case, and every album, if he hadn't passed away uh, after sounded like this, I would probably hate this band quite a bit. My biggest pet peeve is I do not like Kurt Cobain's scream. When you seen regularly, like on MTV Unplugged, for instance, I really dig it quite a bit. But his screaming on songs like Tourette's or Sitless Apprentice just do not do anything for me at all. And I do not like listening to it at all. A lot of his vocal performances on here feel a little off to me. Like they could have been a little bit better. And some of the guitar performances could have been a little bit better. A lot of the guitar solos, if there are any on this album, I really don't care for at all. 
And, you know, just production-wise, I don't really care for the production or the guitar tones either. So it's definitely not a very good sounding album for me. There's some good songs on here for sure. I really like Heart Shaped Box. Really fun to pick that on the guitar. And there's some other good songs like All Apologies and Penny Royalty. But if I'm being honest, I much prefer the MTV Unplugged versions of those songs quite a bit. I love the Unplugged versions of both of those songs. And think they uh, do better in the acoustic guitar unplugged format than they do in the studio version. Or at least in my personal opinion. You know, Francis Farmer's alright. Rank Me is a good song. You know, Dumb's alright. I do prefer the MTV Unplugged version of Dumb as well. So, you know, just overall an album I am very, very mixed on. You know, sometimes I will say it's terrible. If, but if I'm feeling nice, I'll just say yeah, it's just not for me. And that's what it comes down to. A lot of people won't agree with me not liking In Utero. And that is totally fine. I wish I liked all three of these albums very, very much like I used to, but it just wasn't meant to be, I guess. There's a lot of other grunge bands I prefer than Nirvana, like Alice in Chains and Mother Love Bone, and even Soundgarden uh, sometimes I prefer over Nirvana, but it is what it is. So in utero, those are going to be my thoughts on that one. So those are going to be my thoughts on all three Nirvana studio albums. If you're a big fan of Nirvana, or even just a casual fan, or Nirvana hater, no matter who you are, let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on all three of these albums. I'm sure everybody watching has different interpretations of all of them. So let me know down in the comments below all of your thoughts. I would be very interested to hear them. And if y'all dug this video, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and giving me a follow over on the Instagram. I got a lot more wicked shit coming up on both platforms and I would definitely appreciate the support from all of y'all. So I hope y'all dug this video. Definitely blast your favorite Nirvana tunes once you're done watching. I'm probably going to blast the first five songs off, never mind for sure, and some MTV Unplugged, and then go out and kick some ass.